Welcome back to the game plan. My name is Noah Muller, back at it again. This week had a lot of unexpected wins and losses for teams in the NFL. Some tension as well as some players specifically shining. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off today, my New York Giants finally winning a football game. I didn't expect it this season, honestly. They beat the Cleveland Browns 21-15. to Honestly, the offense shine, the defense shine, overall, this is a really big team win for New York. Finally get some, something going in the locker room, going into Thursday against Dallas. I mean, Daniel Jones played a great game, 236 yards, two touchdowns, as well as Malik Neighbors, the superstar of the past two weeks, now going for eight receptions, 78 yards, and two touchdowns. I mean, Neighbors is going to save Daniel Jones' job for the rest of the year. I still think we should go quarterback in the draft. But, I mean, for the time being, Jones is going to start the rest of the year because of how much Malik Neighbors is elevating him, as Malik Neighbors did with Jaden Daniels at LSU. In terms of Cleveland, Deshaun Watson, 196 passing yards, two touchdowns, with Amari Cooper having a similar stat line to Malik Neighbors, seven catches, 86 yards, and two touchdowns. I mean, I'm not saying Cleveland played bad at all, but I think the defense was very weak compared to how they usually are. I mean, this is a top front four in the league. And you let the Giants offensive line, who has been criticized for almost a decade at this point, dominate you. I mean, you have Miles Garrett, an all-pro on there, one of the, the, best, the best players in the NFL in general, and you just let him get dominated. I mean, it was a really bad showing from the Cleveland defense. And not to mention the offensive mistakes. They didn't give Jerome Ford the ball enough as well as Cedric Tillman, fourth down in the fourth quarter, dropping a pass right into his hands. I mean, probably the best pass Watson had thrown all day. Just not the best showing from Cleveland. I don't really expect them to be the team they were last year, but the Giants get some momentum. I'm happy. Everyone in New Jersey and New York is happy. Moving on here, Tampa Bay Buccaneers look very weak compared to last week. I mean, they looked great against the Lions and then just crumbled versus Denver. Cannot get, and the problem from last week that I had addressed, Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, they couldn't get both of them the ball. I mean, they barely got Godwin the ball, but they did not get Evans the ball whatsoever as Denver takes this one 26-7. Bo Nix, you know, not the greatest showing for a quarterback, but I mean, he's a rookie and he gets his first big win. Bo Nix going for 216 passing yards and one rushing touchdown. No passing touchdown, just a rushing one. As well as... um. Tyler Beatty for the Denver Broncos, the running back going for nine rushes for 70 yards. Um, really no big touchdowns for Denver, just a purely dominant game for the Broncos. Defense looked great for Denver. Baker Mayfield goes for 163 passing yards, one touchdown and one interception, as well as Chris Godwin getting the six catches, 53 yards and one touchdown. But, I mean, Mike Evans not included, and that's ridiculous because for the past decade, I don't think this dude has had one season where he hasn't gotten 1,000 yards. I, it's just terrible not to give him pass share. And I get it, Denver had a great pass defense. It was hard to. But, I mean, if you can't get the share going, this team is not going to be the team that it was last year. It's not going to be the team that I said it was last week that can contend with uh, the Saints for top of the division. I mean, you have to get it going at some point. Suffer the first loss of the season for uh, Tampa, so they're not in the biggest trouble, but they really need to focus on getting both receivers involved and having a pass heavy offense. Moving on to the third NFL game, we have the Dallas Cowboys losing to the Ravens, and a lot of tension between Dak Prescott and star receiver CeeDee Lamb. You know, both guys just got big contracts this offseason, and they seem to be arguing uh, yesterday at the game, having a bit of a scuffle, you could say. And is this trouble in paradise for Dallas? I mean, you sign both these guys to huge contracts, and you start off one and two, which, I mean, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Dallas will probably still get a winning record knowing Dallas, but they suffered a Baltimore 28-25. Dak Prescott did have a really good game, though, I must say. 380 passing yards, two touchdowns. Lamar Jackson, 182 passing yards, one passing touchdown. The real dominant uh, force of Baltimore was Derrick Henry with 151 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. I mean, just a force to be reckoned with like Derrick Henry usually is. And it shows how scary this Ravens running offense can be if Derrick Henry is on his game. And the leading receiver for Dallas, not CeeDee Lamb, Jake Ferguson, the tight end, with six catches for 95 yards. And, you know, Dallas I wouldn't worry about. They're going to be the team that they always are. They're not a Super Bowl contender right now, 
they could very well be in a couple of weeks if they start showing out and showing what uh, they paid these players for. But I mean, right now at the top of that division is Philadelphia, and I really don't see it going anywhere else. The, St- the Pittsburgh Steelers, really average offense, but great defense. Starts off 3-0 and as they take down the Chargers 20-10. to You know, I think Justin Fields is doing a decent job, but the defense is really what's clinching in here for Pittsburgh. I mean, Justin Fields goes for 245 passing yards, one passing touchdown, and one interception. Justin Herbert, before getting an ankle injury and exiting the game, 125 passing yards, one passing touchdown. Uh, Chargers leading receiver Ladd McConkey with three catches, 444 yards. And Calvin Austin the third, the Steelers' leading receiver, four catches, 95 yards, and a touchdown. While I don't think the Steelers' offense is god-awful, because I'm not going to say that, because no team that has a god-awful um, offense is going to start off 3-0 and like this, but this defense has been historic, and, you know, Pittsburgh is a force to be reckoned with. I feel like there's going to be a big QB battle when Russell Wilson gets back, and, you know, it's a big deal for Steelers fans starting off 3-0, and new year, new Steelers. But moving on to the next game, Sam Darnold going on an amazing run so far this season. Minnesota starting off 3-0. and Sam Darnold throwing four touchdown passes yesterday as Minnesota dominates the Houston Texans 34-7. to Sam Darnold's stat line, 181 passing yards, four passing touchdowns. C.J. Stroud, 215 passing yards, one passing touchdown, and two interceptions, as well as Justin Jefferson getting six catches for 81 yards and a touchdown. And Stephon Diggs has really been dominating the reception game, getting 10 receptions for 94 yards. And honestly, Texans did not play up to par. Texans have been hyped up this entire offseason to be this great team that's going to be a Super Bowl contender, you know, easily win the division. They didn't play like it. I mean, Minnesota, I get it. They're going on a great run with Sam Darnold. But besides even Sam Darnold playing great, this roster is really showing out more than they should be. But this is is a beatable team. I, I don't understand why nobody can get past the Minnesota Vikings. Like, in all honesty, this team is doing very great, and they're probably going to make the playoffs. I know I'm saying this in week three, unless they have a big fall off. They should be a team that does at least contend for a spot. But, I mean, this team is beatable. I, I don't see why nobody can seem to take down the Vikings. First, it was the Giants obviously got dominated. Then it was the 49ers lost in a close game against Minnesota. We were all shocked. And then the Texans just got dominated by the Vikings, and we don't know what is going on in the NFL. But moving on, was Bryce Young the problem all along? I mean, he does really bad. The Panthers do terrible first two weeks. He gets taken out. Andy Dalton gets put in. Andy Dalton absolutely shines with this offense, and the Panthers get their first win of the year against the Las Vegas Raiders by a score of 36-22. Andy Dalton go over 319 passing yards and three touchdowns. Gardner Minshew going for 214 passing yards, one touchdown, one interception. Deontay Johnson, former Steeler, going for eight receptions, 122 yards, and one touchdown. As well as Trey Tucker for the Las Vegas Raiders going for seven receptions, 96 yards, and a touchdown. I mean, I don't think that he's the problem realistically, but I mean, I don't know how the, where this Panthers team came from. They came from absolutely nowhere. Next up, the final NFL game I'll be reviewing, Kansas City Chiefs, and Rasheed Rice shines, Travis Kelsey having a historically terrible year, not being featured in this offense whatsoever, as the Chiefs win 22-17, Patrick Mahomes with 217 passing yards, two touchdowns, and one interception, Kirk Cousins with 230 passing yards, one touchdown, one interception, Rasheed Rice with 12 receptions, 110 yards, and a touchdown. Drake London with 6 receptions, 67 yards, and a touchdown. I mean, the Chiefs playing decent football. They could be better, but Travis Kelsey just not being featured. It really disappoints me and all Chiefs fans, probably. As Boise State running back Ashton Jaunty dominating so far in college football through four games. He has 586 rushing yards and nine touchdowns. I don't know where this dude came from. I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable what he is doing. And his draft stock is rising every single day. But moving on to our MLB topic and the last topic of the day, the Yankees clinched the playoffs. Currently, they are 92 and 64. The Yankees will be in the playoffs, and the Mets are inching closer to a wild card spot with a record of 87 and 69. 
You know, the Mets, really great comeback late season, and I think they could be a great team to clinch the playoffs. That'll be it for the game plan. Next episode will be all about week four of the NFL as well as the MLB playoff race and week five of college football. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you all later on all next time on the game plan.